all my beautiful friends. Today, I'm gonna to talk about trees and how they affect your homestead budget. Let's go. I'm Becky. I used to live in the consumer rat race just like you. But one day, I had enough, so I sold it all, moved to the country, and built my own log cabin with my own two hands. Now, I spend my time discovering new ways to live a simple, healthy lifestyle with more free time and way less stress, then sharing what I've learned with you. Welcome to Becky's Homestead. We all need trees. I just love to ride my mule in the woods. And look at all the trees. I have seen some huge, amazingly beautiful trees way out in the woods when I ride. I just love them. But we also have to consider how trees can affect our homestead. And we need to put, you know, we need to take that into consideration when we're looking at property and we're thinking about laying out a homestead somewhere. Or maybe just fixing up the one we have. Trees can cause huge problems and I'm going to tell you why. Branches can fall, you know, dead trees can fall and that's just so much weight when it hits things it'll cause damage and you don't want that to happen of course because we all pinch our pennies to build our homesteads and you know we want what we put up there <laughs> to last because we build it to last so we don't want a tree to come crashing down on it and just wipe it out. So you have to take that into consideration. When we moved here, we didn't have trees this big on our other property. So, you know, this is like eye-opening to us. One thing I want to point out is there are lots of guys with chainsaws and tractors that will just come and destroy your property. I know lots of them. What you need is an arborist. And an arborist, I'm gonna read you what an arborist is because I wanna, I wanna say it exactly right. Okay, an arborist is a professional who has gained the technical competence to correctly care for trees and woody plants. I only know one true arborist and I love that man. He's so talented. He knows what to cut, where to cut, where to trim, what tree it is. He just knows everything, so talented complete opposite of all the men with chainsaws and tractors that'll just wipe out your property. Nothing breaks my heart more than to see the city people and the suburban people move here and just clear cut their property. It just breaks my heart. That is so horrible. And I just, I just kind of giggle, you know, because I'm like, oh, you're going to want those trees for shade in the summer. <laughs> it's like, you're going to regret that move. But a lot of people just, they just move half back. They just move back to wherever they came from or halfway back. So basically, they've just kind of destroyed a piece of property and then leave. So it's very sad. And you might think, well, I'll just plant new trees. You can, which is a good thing, but it takes time for them to get big and shady and produce anything. So unless you're super young, like you're not even gonna benefit from that. But still do it. It's still good for the, you know, other people. I'm going to tell you how we dealt with all this and what we had to deal with when we moved here. First off, we moved the cabin. So we did need a wide entrance to come up into the property because my property is, you know, surrounded by big trees on the perimeter and then some in the middle. But we had to, it had a little driveway opening. So we did have to cut a few trees down to fit the cabin in. And then after that, we wanted to put up perimeter fencing. So that was just so, so so much hard work and a lot of money. Like we've done tons of work, hard, hard work, but we've also had to hire professionals to help us clear because it's just such a huge job. Tree work is very, very, very hard work. It's heavy, it's dangerous, it's just a lot of work. That's why I wanna tell you guys to take that into consideration when you're looking at a piece of property. Um, we also, we've just, we've spent thousands of dollars, you know, on the property, just trying to get the trees safe, healthy, and get a perimeter fencing up. So you definitely need to think about that, you know, when you're looking at a piece of property, or like I said, the property you're on, 
And a lot of people, you know, might think, oh, you know, build your homestead faster. Well, things need to be taken care of before you can move forward. And this is one of them you're going to have to take into consideration. If you like trees and you want a property with some big, gorgeous, beautiful trees on it, you're going to have to take this into consideration and fit it into your budget. So I just want to make sure you all know that because, you know, we never thought about that before in the beginning when I was starting homesteads. I never thought about that. I was just like, what? <laughs> it's like, but you know, when you put a, spend a lot of money on a fence, you for sure don't want like big trees falling on your fence. We've already had that happen. So it fell over, squished the fence, was like in the neighbor's yard. And that's the time we did need the chainsaw man with the tractor because obviously that tree was already down. And we needed heavy equipment to move it because we're talking about a really big tree. So if you don't have that money, like, what are you going to do? You're going to be out there with your axe trying to chop the gigantic tree off of your neighbor's property and clear their driveway? Crazy. You just can't do it. So keep that in mind when you're buying a homestead or the homestead you're on. Also, you know, you just have to think about, imagine if, you know, you had a tree near your house and it wasn't a healthy tree and it just fell on your house. I mean, my house is very sturdy and put together very well as a log cabin. But I mean, I've seen just plain wood, structure, wood structure houses just crushed by trees. I'm sure we've all seen it, you know, here and there through our lives. So, you know, if it's a healthy tree and it's by your house, I think that's one thing. But if it's, you know, an iffy tree or it's, it just might need some work, have an arbor come out, an arborist come out and look at it. They'll tell you what you need. You don't necessarily have to cut it down. You might just have to take better care of it, you know, have it trimmed up a little bit. So I know this video isn't the most fun, exciting video, but it is something that you all need to think about. And that's why I want to bring it to your attention. Because really what I want to see is more people have little successful homesteads out there. So keep it in mind. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Happy homesteading. Bye-bye.